today's show, find out what it's like to play in Sir Doug Nichols round. I think this round's perfect for just throwing yourself into that um, Indigenous round, embracing it and really learning and, and understanding their culture. McAdam reveals how he conquered his greatest fear and we investigate the role of a travelling emergency. Hello everyone and welcome to the Optus Crow Show. I'm Alana Smith. Well, Sir Doug Nichols' round is an important event on the AFL calendar. Each game is dedicated to celebrating Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and their contribution to Australian football. Today, the Crows will mark the occasion by wearing a Guernsey that commemorates every Indigenous player in the club's history. We had a chat to the playing group to find out what this special match means to them. We as a club we need to be educated and we need to know more about Indigenous culture and um, we're doing a lot of work around that, we do a lot of work around that and we've, we've come a long way. Um, there's still a long way to go and um, it starts with us up top and it starts with the Indigenous boys helping us out and um, I guess for me it's about learning more about their culture so that I can relate but then that also I can help educate more and more people outside of the club and then once you get that build up because we've got such a great platform where we are with the Adelaide Football Club. We wear the we wear the crest on our polos and all our training guns. Is the way that we've got this platform, we can then spread it out and not just our family and friends, but also on social media and the big reach that we've got that way. So um, really important for us as leaders, but also important for the whole club to educate. Back it goes again. Okay. got a lot of Indigenous boys here and we have over the journey um, who are all great characters and are happy to I guess share their journey and, and their culture and what it means to them and I guess for me it's um, embracing that and, and trying to learn and, and enjoying it with them and, and spending the week with them learning about um, as I said yeah their culture and, and what it means to them. You know, throughout the year, it's not just one round. It's um, it's really important that we're all, as I said, educating ourselves. Um, you know, learning about their culture, enjoying their culture, and, and where they've come from. And um, you know, if you get the chance to speak to these guys, they've got some great stories um, about family and um, and their and their past. Eddie's been he's been a constant presence. He's a he's a bubbly man. He's always up and about. Um, he's always up for a chat too, and um, he's had a big role to play with a lot of the indigenous boys and their their transition from either 18 year olds moving out of home or coming from a sample club with Shano and things like that. Um, I've had a few chats to him here and there, and he's just he's just always wanting to educate, always wants to learn from us, and always wants to help out others. He's just a, a really genuine man and uh, really honest, and he's just great to have around. I think my favourite part would be the, the intricacies with it. You've got um, the shield on the back here which represents the Ghana people and then even something like We Flies One translated to Ghana on, um, on the back here as well. So there's a few little things. There's obviously the big um, arms wrapping around like Eddie um, having his arms around us. You've got the hand there as well. All that stuff's cool. I just like the little details that they put in there. I think this round's perfect for just throwing yourself into that um, Indigenous round, embracing it and really learning and, and understanding their culture. player who has been instrumental in sharing his Indigenous culture with the club is Shane McAdam. The mature age recruit grew up in the remote Kimberley region of Western Australia where he often spent time out bush with friends and family. Living 800 kilometres away from the nearest beach, McAdam developed a fear of the ocean. But it was a feeling he managed to overcome earlier this year during a visit to the York Peninsula with his teammates. So the festival is about just, I think, getting all the community, all, all the people in the community and around the Port Victoria region, the York Peninsula region, um, come together and just celebrate their culture and their upbringing and the way they and their ancestors have lived throughout, the, throughout their time here. Yeah, it's really important. It's really important just to um, keep that culture going and keep, um, keep everyone involved and also keep uh, non-Indigenous people who haven't really experienced anything like that to uh, give them a bit of education and uh, see how 
how others, other Indigenous people live that are from the area, so I think it's very important to um, keep, keep stuff like that going. So I'm from Horse Creek in uh, Western Australia. A very remote little town, pretty much in the desert, so hardly no water. And then the Port of Victoria is um, just right on the edge of the ocean, so it's very different scenery compared to back home. It was yeah, a little bit frightening at first, being out on the boat and going out into the ocean where we went out pretty far where you could um, barely see the inland or see the land. So it was a little bit frightening being out on the boat, just driving in the middle of the ocean. You never know what's, what's out there. We went out for the whole day early in the morning and then I was spearfishing, did a couple of swims, but not too much. And then I was only, the only one not to catch anything and, and we had the last stop off. And they said, oh, the boys, this is the last stop, so it's your last chance. And I was the only one who didn't catch anything up to that point. So I was, I was never going to leave without catching anything. So I jumped in the water and just, uh, just swam everywhere, just looking for a fish to spear. <laughs> so the main reason why I didn't want to get out of the water is because I knew if I was the only one that didn't catch anything, I would have copped it a lot. Uh, rumours would have travelled back here to Adelaide and the boys here would have got into me. So I was never leaving without a fish and then end up getting one in the end, so I was very happy with that. It took me a long while to get it, but end up getting it in the end. Stay tuned, because after the break, we investigate the role of a player that's been selected as a travelling emergency. Seeing the boys, um, how they prepared for the away game was good, so when I got the opportunity, I'd, I sort of knew what I needed to do to get myself in a certain position to play. back to the Optus Crow Show, I'm Mark Pickley. Every away game, emergency players travel with the team in case of a late injury or illness in the selected side. These emergencies tend to follow the same routine as their teammates, including warming up on the field before the game. Last weekend, we got a unique look at their match day role. Travel emergency clearly is there for for backup for anything that happens throughout the you know the warm up and, and the pre match. So yeah, we have to be quite selective of who we take. Players are selected based on um, that they're the next player in, and then we have to make sure we've got coverage in each line. So you know, if we if we bring in a midfielder as a as a travelling emergency, we need to make sure that if we lose a back, that there's got to be a player that can go back and help to bring that midfielder in. Game day, it's, um, it's a bit different. You're sort of in around it, you've got to prepare to play as you do the day before, um, just hydrate and that sort of thing. As if you were playing, um, you're pretty much yeah, preparing to play like everyone else up until uh, pre they pretty much run out on the ground. It's different for the fact that you don't have the adrenaline, the nerves, um, so you sort of you are relaxed and yeah, it probably changes the way that you are around. Um, the room. They do all the training, they do all the meetings, they take all the notes as required. As we've had many times where players hurt themselves in a warm up, pulled up a bit tight, and they've had to step straight in. We also have to look at you know, a player that's not in the side, giving them the best opportunity to perform at the lower level so they can get in the team. It does obviously mean in a normal season you're not playing games, but it means you are close and that um, they do back you in if someone wants to go down that you can come in and do the job. It's especially now that we don't have a, a sample team playing, there's opportunities to give players some experience in that space to know what it's like to travel. So we have had the ability to take one or two younger fellas. Yeah, we've got Woz here today who's just doing it for a bit of experience and just to see what it's like being in the rooms before the game. Josh Wallace, great. Right, come on the trip, this is a experience for him, okay? Get him here with you blokes, travel with the teams, good to have you here. Seeing the boys, um, how they prepared for the away game was good, so when I got the opportunity, I I sort of knew what I needed to do to get myself in a certain position to play. 
The only place you can find all the official Crows news is at afc.com.au. Stay connected with the club via their social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And make sure you're following at the Crows Show on Twitter so you don't miss out on any of the stories from Westlakes. There's only a few areas that broadcasters don't have access to on game day and one of them is the medical room. A few years ago, Dr Mark Sasana gave us an exclusive tour of this important space. Today, we're revisiting the story thanks to Bendigo Bank. Hi, Mark Sasana, club doctor at the Crows. We're two hours before match day. I'm about to take you down to the medical room, which even the broadcasters don't get into on match day. No. Okay, this is our emergency medical room, uh, by and large, where we bring our injured players. Obviously on match day there could be a whole host of different scenarios of things that could happen, from really severe injuries to more soft tissue, muscular, joint injuries. So the most important thing on match day is to have everything set up. As you see, we've got two beds here, which we can treat an urgent player, we can treat a less serious player. If you look over here, we've got some emergency equipment, which we might need to use injectable gear, emergency drugs. Over here we've got an ultrasound machine which we may use to look at fractures. So we've got a number of medications that we might use on match day. Some of the more acute interventions for someone that needs a lot of pain relief. We've got urgent pain medications. For us in terms of medical staff we have two doctors on match days. We have a trainer especially assigned to us in the room. We also have two physios. Then quite clearly a player on a match day is trying to avoid this room but occasionally we have circumstances unfortunately where they need to come here and again priorities are going to be well looked after all the equipment's available or the emergency non-emergency equipment that a player could ever need to have that injury assessed and managed on match day. There's plenty more to come on the show. Coming up, Rory Laird chats about his new role in the midfield. All of the, the team results haven't gone the way we wanted um, sort of freed me up a little bit. enjoyed a full six day break between matches this week with thanks to Flight Centre let's fly around social media to see what the players have been sharing with their followers. club champion Rory Laird is enjoying a new role in the midfield this season. The former defender recently impressed with a standout performance against Collingwood collecting 37 touches at 80% efficiency. We had a chat to Laird to see how he's enjoying the positional change. Laird traps it, bananas it oh. and kicks the goal of the afternoon. Yeah, I've really enjoyed my time moving into the midfield. I well, spoke about this quarter how he hadn't been in the centre bounce at all this year, then all of a sudden they're throwing him into the centre. All of the, the team results haven't gone the way we wanted, um, sort of freed me up a little bit. It's pretty funny, Brody started in there and now he's gone to half back and now I'm in the midfield and uh, sort of switched places, but um, you know it's freed me up a little bit and um, I'm still working on sort of the ins and outs of the, of the role of um, you know playing inside as compared to half back, so um, definitely a learning experience for me. Hulky, over the top to the run of Laird. 
Little distance in the kick. McCadden almost entitled to a free kick. Doesn't matter now. It's gone all the way through for a goal. I've had a few pinch hits here and there um, over the past couple of years, but it's uh, usually for a half or a quarter or just for 10 minutes. So to actually play some full games in there and actually see how it works, you know, for a, you know four quarters. Um, you know, as I said, it's been a really good learning for me, and um, hopefully I, you know, keep improving in there. I've got some positives and some strength around the ground ball and around the contest, so I can sort of play to my natural ability there. Um, I do like playing half back. I haven't sort of turned away from the backman, and um, you know, if I have to go back there and play, I uh, happily will. So um, it's more just being able to move around the whole ground and um, you know, not sort of run with an opponent the whole day. So um, as I said, it's all new to me though. I'm still learning the ins and outs of it, and um, you know, I'm sort of working with the coaches and a couple of players for that. Now Adelaide, a big chance through Brody Smith from 55. Let it go, and he does. He does the limbo in the end. Well, he's pretty dangerous off half back, so I think it's good if we can sort of switch and you know have the flexibility in our team to have people play in various positions. So, um, no, we sort of joked about it because he trained there all summer and I trained down back, and now you know as soon as the game starts, we sort of flipped. What a drop step that was! <laughs> Part of the season went between. I was spoken to Will Hamill a fair bit. You know the running, um, you know creative half back. Um, that he's sort of working on that part of his game, I can sort of help him with that. And um, I think there's a good mixture between most of those boys in terms of the running, um, you know, the, the creative play out of there. They sort of speak to Brody and I. And then they've got, you know, Luke Brown, Daniel Talia, Kyle Hardigan, um, a fair few guys that actually do the other side of the ball, you know, even better than, you know, defending one on one. So it's a really good mix and match down there. And, um, you know, those guys are like sponges, all the young kids just want to learn. So it's, um, you know, great to see. <laughs> go anywhere because up next we'll hear from Crows coach Matthew Nix. I mean really it's about educating, it's about gaining a better understanding um, you know, of Indigenous culture. The club is yet to register a win this season, but that hasn't stopped the unwavering support from the Crows family. Thanks to Optus, we're taking a look at what fans have shared on social media. Sunshine filled supporters with optimism on the Gold Coast. But those at home chose to reminisce. Some even took to Twitter to proudly reaffirm their allegiance through thick and thin. Every week on the show, we ask senior coach Matthew Nix a question thanks to Thomas Farms. This week, we find out what Sir Doug Nichols' round means to Nixie and the Adelaide Football Club. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so Doug Nichols' round is um, is a really significant round, and it's um, I mean really it's about educating, it's about gaining a better understanding, um, you know, of Indigenous culture uh, and the history of this country, and uh, it's it's one that I, I really look forward to, um, especially for our Indigenous players. Um, you know, to be able to put on the Guernsey uh, that they wear or the jumper that they wear for that weekend's game. And this, this year's jumper is unbelievable. It's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's such a good looking jumper and, and well designed by, by Shane. Um, you know, we've, we've been able to talk through what the jumper means and, and some, of the, um, some of the stories within the jumper and the design. It's incredible to, to hear Shane talk through it. So, as well as, um, you know, Eddie Hocking, who's put a lot into that jumper. So, from that point of view, you know, it's, it's great for our Indigenous players to be proud of their heritage, but also for us to get, you know, a stronger understanding of, of the history of this country. That's all from us today. Thanks for tuning in. You can keep up to date with all the latest Crows news at afc.com.au and by following the club on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Stay tuned to Channel 7 to see the Crows proudly wear their Indigenous Guernsey as they take on Geelong at Adelaide Oval. We'll see you again next week. Bye for now.